So I have this web page where I am running a Monte Carlo simulation. Um, it's for a course that I'm creating on Monte Carlo methods um, and simulations. And it's one of the most basic ideas in uh, Monte Carlo estimation. Essentially, it's sort of the 101 example for Monte Carlo estimations. Um, what you do is you imagine that you have a square dartboard and you're throwing darts at it randomly, assuming that the darts fall according to a uniform distribution. And then you inscribe within the square a circle. And the area of the square is going to be R square. And uh, the area of the circle is going to be some function of R again. And of course, a function of pi as well. But you know R and you want to find pi, right? So you can use uh, the area covered by the darts as, uh, you know, a proxy for finding pi. And so let's see, we, we're going to throw 50 darts every 50 milliseconds at this board and see where that takes us. So as it counts the number of uh, darts that fall within the circle versus those outside the circle and takes the ratio and does the according, you know, does the corresponding calculation, it gets a better and better estimate of pi. But to get a really good estimate of pi, you have to let it run for a very, very long time. You could, of course, throw more darts, uh, you know, at a faster interval or so on, and you'll eventually get closer. But there is a problem with this application. Uh, every dart that you see on the board here is actually an, an SVG circle, which is the problem. Because at 50 darts being thrown every 50 milliseconds, my DOM is exploding. So I'm adding 50 SVG elements to my DOM every 50 milliseconds. At this rate, uh, I'm basically adding like uh, my, my DOM is exploding at the rate of uh, a thousand elements per second right which means that if i need a million darts i'll have to wait around for let's say 15 minutes and then i'll have more than a million elements in my dom and obviously that had its problem my browser is just going to kill itself in a while so we need a better solution to this how do you draw uh, something like a scatter plot without using svg uh, with tons and tons of data points that's that's sort of the key and one on obvious answer is uh, webgl so that is something that apparently helps you make visualizations with uh, a much higher number of data points without using explicit DOM elements. So that's exactly what we're going to try here. We're going to try and port this app to use WebGL instead of having individual SVG circle elements. So I'm just going to ask ChatGPT to do that for me. But before that, I'm just going to pause this and maybe just refresh the page so that you know any extra resources are cleared up. Um, write an HTML page which uses WebGL to draw randomly sampled points on a square. Let's see what it comes up with. It's crafting the canvas, it's engaging WebGL, 1000 random points is fine and there we are. Okay. You can see a bunch of inline styling. I'm not going to really care too much about the quality of the program, but uh, okay, by the very look of it, seems like SGL, you know, WebGL is pretty complicated. Certainly not easy. But anyway, let me just see if I can go ahead and put this in maybe a new file. So I'm going to edit a new file called webgl.html and paste it and I'm just going to go back to my browser and load that page. Right, that looks okay but it's certainly not a square and it's certainly I need it to be a, a lot prettier. So let's see if we can prompt it further and say um, Ensure that the square is properly visible in only a part of the page. Use white background and a black border for the square. Use blue circular markers for the 
Okay, let's see. And of course, the trouble with chat GPT is that it's going to give me the whole file. So I can't just ask it. I, I probably can ask it exactly what to change, but it's a lot easier to just delete the whole file and uh, come back with whatever it tells me to. So there we go. We copy this, paste it, and go back to the browser and refresh this. That makes a little more sense. Mm. Yeah, so what I need to do now is to sort of animate this. Modify this so that 50 points are being sampled every 50 milliseconds and ensure that they accumulate on the All right, it did something again. Oops, should not have copied that, but anyway, let me just go ahead and paste all of that back and uh, let's go back to the browser and refresh it. Perfect, that's not bad at all. Maybe at this point, we'd like to reduce the circle of, uh, reduce the radius of the circle because they really need to look like points and not like raindrops. So here's the thing. Let me just see if I can inspect the, Thing. Clearly, the DOM isn't exactly too large. It's just a canvas with stuff in it. All right. And um, yeah, let me just go back to chat GPT and say that uh, reduce the ra radius of the points. Don't generate the whole file again. Tell me exactly. Okay, okay, there is a GL point size uh, parameter somewhere. So let's go back and look for it. Point size is 10. In fact, you know what, let's, let's be extreme and just reduce it to one. And let's see if I can do this. Beautiful. That works. And now what we want to do is uh, draw a quadrant of a circle such that its origin is the same as the origin of the graph, which is the bottom left corner of uh, the square. And uh, color the points falling within the quadrant a different color. Let's, let's just make them you know, orange because that color contrasts with green somehow. So, all right, let's go back and say, mm -hmm. Filter the points. All right, okay. let me be extremely mathematical and explicit. Assume that the square is on a coordinate system such that the lower left corner is the origin. Filter points that are that are, uh, how do you write this, that are at a distance of less than one unit from the origin and color them orange, let the rest of the points stay green. There's a lot of stuff it's asking me to modify. So I think I told it earlier that I don't want it to generate the whole file, only tell me what to modify. But here there's tons of stuff to modify. So maybe just ask it to generate the whole file. All right, so we have something. 
let's take a look and there we are not bad except here too of course i need to reduce the uh, sizes of the points so again do we have the gl point size we're gonna make it one refresh the page and there it is a lot better I, I certainly don't see my PC making any whirring sounds. Certainly is not complaining, so this is a lot better. The one last thing I need to actually finish the demo is counts of the points that are inside and outside. So let's try that. I'm going to say uh, declare to global variables both ints named both ints uh, initialized to zero named an orange and n blues which at any time represent the number of orange and blue dots respectively me exactly what to change let's see if this causes too big a change the positions colors okay it says add these two lines so i'm gonna see if they have their do they have positions yep there we go probably need to add another indent whoa Hey, where do I need to put, update the counters and the add points function? Ah, I see. Okay, so there's a function called add points in which I'm supposed to update this. So yeah, there is the function. Compute the distance from the origin, but uh, ah, okay, okay. I think uh, it's within the if conditions that uh, they need to be n orange plus plus and n plus plus plus. Okay, all right. Here we are and what i'm going to do is so at the end of add points i'm going to console.log the result profile so let's see um the total area is r square and uh, i'm going to have to do some quick <laughs> calculation after even after months of doing this you know nothing really beats pen and paper so really we have area of the square which is represented by n blues plus n orange and area of the circle which is simply n orange and uh, this n blues uh, time uh, n blues plus n orange is also the same as r square and the other value which is n orange is pi r squared by 4. So if we were to simply take the ratio of n orange to n blues plus n oranges that would be pi r squared by 4 divided by r squared so that gives us pi by 4 and therefore 4 times that ratio is essentially our estimate of pi and what we can do is uh, let's just say let my estimate is n oranges divided by yeah copilot does it for me i didn't know i had to do the pen and paper back of the envelope calculations but nevertheless i'm going to log it except that the logs will flow very 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 rapidly is there something i can do to ensure that the logs uh, come only once in a while i perhaps could um my colors is the array that holds everything in place right so let's say that i want to do it only every thousand points so what i'm going to do is if uh, colors dot length no, not estimate pi just do that no need to add another function but i just don't want to do it after every ten thousand what's the modulo operator in js i wonder is there a modulo let's see Ah, okay, so module operator indeed is there and I want to log it every 10,000. 
every thousand steps so this should work hopefully and i'm going to go back open the I'm going to put this down over here he had just this a bit go to the console and refresh the page 3.06, 3.08, 3.12, 3.133, 1.4, 1.5, and so on. So there we are. This is how <laughs> you uh, write WebGL code by using an LLM primarily. One of the things that uh, struck me as I was doing this exercise is that WebGL is not just a plugin or a library or something. It's, it's a language of itself. So if you were to look at simply the way that it declares stuff, see that it's it's sort of a language of itself and uh, it is that source that is embedded in uh, the html page which is not exactly easy to do i would have thought that there is a convenient uh, javascript library or a plugin which abstract these things out uh, for us but it turns out that you know i need some way i need to know just enough webgl to at least be able to write this kind of source code and this is all greek and latin i, I don't understand any of what that means so let's let's take a look at the comments that uh, GPT wrote. It's a vertex shader receives the vertex position in 0, 01 and converts it to clip space. I have no idea what clip space is. Receives a per vertex color and passes it to the fragment shader. I have no idea what these things mean. So clearly, if you want to do serious WebGL, maybe it's worthwhile trying to invest some time in learning the WebGL language itself. Uh, and of course, like I said earlier, there are, there seem to be um, JavaScript APIs that let you manipulate the results of a WebGL language, perhaps. But that's the next step. First, you have to know WebGL to begin with. So yeah, until then, just use an LLM. See you next time.